Hey, Eric. What's up, Chris? I heard on the internet that you signed up for a marathon. Yeah, man. I signed up for a full marathon in Indianapolis at the end of October, which this episode will be out then, right? This podcast comes out on October 9th. Nice. So yeah, the marathon is called the Monumental Marathon in Indianapolis. It's my first full marathon. I anticipate running below three hours and 30 minutes, but I'm going to take it easy pace, seven minutes, 30 seconds for the wow. whole marathon. Well, Eric, we'll check back on your marathon progress in a future episode of Retrograde Amnesia. Thanks for asking. This podcast is definitely not about running, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Yes. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic Japanese role-playing games, chapter by chapter, beat by beat. This is Season 5, we're covering Xenosaga, Episode 1, The Will to Power. That's right, that's what it says. In German. Der Wille zur Macht. My name is Chris, I'm joined by Eric. Hello, Eric. Nice to see you again. Welcome back to the podcast. Look at me, thank you. Yes, I'm looking at you. We're also joined by, I'm looking at it right now, looking at the real net in the window on Windows. The Real Net is a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. You too can join The Real Net by going to patreon.com slash retroam and giving us at least $1. The Real Net is, of course, our Discord server that chats along with us as we record live. Hello, folks. We're also joined by the fake net, our post-production AI companion who made all of the hallucinogens found in the video game Sludge Life. Initializing fake net. You can rattle and hiss while I spray, ride and skate. Take a sig on my lip while I dry my paint. I looked at a couple of screenshots of Sludge Life the other day, and I was like, yeah, I want to play this, but also, I feel like after I play it, I won't be able to breathe very well. It, you feel gross. <laughs> like, it just feels, it's just hazy, smoky, disgusting. Yeah. Definitely got, like, a been sweating in a sauna for seven hours, yeah. five, and the sauna's full of the bad drugs. I'm glad you were able to have that experience of, of playing Sludge Life, because I'm not going to do it. Thank you, and Can't. also with you, right? Did you just get activated? And also with you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Pull the but, Catholic but, school phrasing out to just throw Chris off of his game. It wasn't part of the Xenosaga discussion, so it can't, I cannot press the button. Right, no, it's so. not. It is an unofficial Catholic schoolboy activation phrase. We left off in our last recording as uh, Cosmos was entering the chat, correct? Yes, a screaming hole emerged in the wall. You'll have to excuse me as I'm reading my notes off a computer today, which is not how it's usually done here at Retrograde Amnesia. Battling Cosmos plays. The laser fires at the Gnosis arm, which drops Shion. Shion chokes, gasping for breath as she falls. Yeah, but it touched her. The Gnosis touched Shion. Why does she live? And will this game ever answer that question? That's happened twice now, right? Yeah, she's been googly grabbed by the bendy stretch arm strong yeah. Gnosis arm multiple times. Yeah. Special girl of destiny, Eric. My guess, uh, my logical, my facts and logic guess is perhaps there is a proximity field within the Cosmos unit that creates some kind of Hilbert Effectian protection zone that lets the Gnosis do some sweet touching without some sweet killing. So she's been around Cosmos so much that she has part of that Some essence. radiation shit. Oh, okay. I think so. Not all sure right. if that's going to check out. All right. What it's I can like when o- April O'Neil gets all fucked up because she was around the Turtles for a long time when she gets old. That really happened? In a comic book, yeah. Oh, man, that sucks for April, man. Yeah. She put in the work and that's how she gets rewarded? Yeah, but her daughter's like really fucking strong. Awesome. Is her daughter with Michelangelo? No, her daughter is with Casey Jones. Whoa! Didn't see that. He seems abusive. Are you sure that's okay? Uh, in the co- <laughs> There's all different kinds of cottonwood. Okay. Here. okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, Ask Eastman. Tune back in with us for Turtle Talk 2010. <laughs> That'd be fun. And what I can only describe as a cool as fuck in 2003 on a PlayStation 2 sequence, the wall splinters and shatters, and Cosmos calmly Terminator walks through the wall. Cosmos calmly walks up to the Gnosis, then enters a spring? What the shit? Maybe a spring somersault type of situation? Then performs a springing... Backflip. Performs an air- acrobatic jump kick that honestly kind of misses before she does a Matrix three-point landing. Yeah. Cosmos then turns around and fires laser balls out of her hand cannon. Alan appears in the hole, looking swole and heroic as fuck. He sees Shion and runs over to her, asking, Chief, are you all right? Do you think that in Cosmos doing all these sick flips and whatnot, do you get a sense of an increased level of weightiness from Cosmos? Like, it feels like the impact of the hits are much better than they are in later Takahashi games. 
I don't know. Like, I'm expecting her, I'm expecting Cosmos, like the Terminator, to weigh between 500 and 3,000 pounds. That's true. So I want her to dent the floor when she lands. Like, she's not got thrusters in the high heels that give her a soft landing, right? Yeah, that's true. Like, to me, she doesn't feel weighty. I think she weighs 97 pounds. Okay. She has kind of like advanced polymer fucking skin or some shit. The game's commitment to camera shake. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And impact is. I guess greater than it has been in perhaps Xenoblade games because that was one thing that I always found kind of jarring was the floatiness to the cutscenes in times, especially You're the ac- action sequence. Much more of a fan of Japanese anime than I am, and I'm not attuned to Hong Kong martial arts cinema, but I'm getting some. I've seen the Matrix effect to the direction of Cosmos with these combat sequences. Yeah, that's probably like, it. Do you think that's it, or do you think it's the influence from everything else that actually inspired the Matrix? I was going to say because we're in Matrix fever right now, man. The Matrix has seen anime also. Yes, so it also is anime, and sometimes <laughs> yeah, yes. So I think it is a you know there's an Ouroboros going on here. Oh, also, do you think Cosmos walked here and Alan simply followed, or do you think he kind of was like chatting and conversing with Cosmos on the way about what she's doing and where uh, she's she? She did not talk to Alan. <laughs> it's okay. Did not acknowledge Alan whatsoever. Catching her breath, Shion looks up at Alan. Surprised, she wonders what he's doing here. It's a great question. Alan responds to the improbable. Cosmos helped everyone escape. They're all on the training ship. Now we need to get you out of here. And so it wasn't a nightmare. She didn't come to life and kill everyone. The robot is good, actually. Because remember in that previous scene, Cosmos came to life and everyone was scared out of their britches. Yes, there's been a, a little bit of a, a rope-a-dope to the audience here. So everybody's fine. Takahashi and the blue-haired guy, they're on the escape pod. They're good. Tetsuya Takahashi. That's right. Togashi, I think you meant to the say. Sa- no, to Takahashi <laughs> was there too. Okay. He's just out of sight. He's just like Hideo. Yeah, he hid himself in the game. Shion says Cosmos' name and looks up to see her 2v wanting some Gnosis. A golden Gnosis rolls up to Cosmos. She drops the visor and charges her shit up. Shion freaks out and says, what? The Hilbert effect. Cosmos hits her super, it cuts to space, and blue light radiates out of the Waglinde and through the surrounding space. Space! Back on the Waglinde, the gold Gnosis takes a few shots from Cosmos' cannon, then falls over and explodes. Cosmos then does some sick running dodges toward another one, avoiding its punches and connecting with her own power fist, zapping it the fuck to death. Chris, the Hilbert effect, what do you think that is at this point? I think the Hilbert effect is the effect that allows the Gnosis to be pulled into the physical realm. I think that's what it actually is, too. The anime explains it more clearly, which we're watching for bonus content at patreon.com slash retroam. Yes. $3. Do you also want to look up the Hilbert effect in the dictionary, or is it not time for that? I think we can look it up now. Okay, let's do it. And then I'll tell you, as a preview, what it says from the anime. Okay. The Hilbert effect, a device which generates a finitely bound realm. A sensory realm, to be exact. Dude, a finitely bound realm is excellent. (laughs) Yes, that's a new name of the podcast. To enable an intersection with the imaginary realm, there are specific wave energies that exist in both the realms of real numbers and imaginary numbers. We're talking about numbers here, Eric. This device interprets such wave energies into a common language, thereby allowing the physical realm to interact with the imaginary realm, the realm of the Planck scales. Dude, that's some shit that you fucking get up and just say when you're supposed to tell the class what the Hilbert effect is. None of that made any sense. What, what the, Planck scales? Well, good thing there's another paragraph, Eric. Great. What this means, then, is that the gnosis, which exists outside our physical walls, can effectively be dealt with using physical, real-world approaches. Okay. The anime, I'm paraphrasing here, maybe I'll yes. drop the dialogue in, simplified that greatly by saying... The Hilbert effect materializes the gnosis and makes them vulnerable. Okay. Sure. That works, I guess. It's fine. As this is happening, the camera cuts to Alan and Shion, bathed in blue light and holding hands. I think Alan was helping her up and they just froze, so they're in like the awkward hand-holding position. Mm-hmm. They are unable to believe the shit. It immediately cuts the cosmos, leaping through the air and super-punching a gnosis in the face, which it, then it falls over and explodes. Now Virgil's back. He's fine. And he asks an important question. What the hell? Shion tries to warn Cosmos that a Gnosis is about to splat her. The Gnosis then splats Cosmos, but an orange blade slices through the top of it, then slices the Gnosis clean in half. Yeah, there's a lot of sausage cutting going on there, because that's a goblin, and the goblins look a lot like sausage. Yeah, they're delicious. Yes. The Gnosis explodes into light. Cosmos walks through the explosion smoke, blade hand glowing orange. Cosmos then hero swipes that hand like a swordsman do when they sling blood off of their swordsman sword. And then she approaches Alan and Shion, who are still locked in embrace. They get tighter as Cosmos approaches. Alan cannot believe this shit. Literally, he says, I don't believe it. 
Cosmos walks over and stares at Shion, red eyes beaming. It's definitely weird because I think the red eyes are... Does she always have red eyes or is this a Terminator mode thing? Like a Hilbert effect activated? I think Cosmos has always had red eyes, but remember we had that one scene where there her pupils would shift around mm. like the camera, like cameras. Yeah, uh, aperture. Yes, aperture, aperture science. That's right. This is a portal game. An elevator full of gnosis appear out of nowhere. It looks like there's three different types in there. Cosmos responds to that by turning around and materializing two different three-barrel Gatling guns out of thin air two in each hand, Jesus. which she unloads on the monsters. There's a weird shot where it zooms in on Cosmos' chin and neck, where we can see that she's wearing a golden dog tag with her and Vector's name on it. Chris, does she live on Dog Street? The Bouncer. I don't know. Okay. When Cosmos is done and all that remains is the smoldering pile of Gnosis art assets, then Cosmos speaks her first words in the real world. Xion. Uh, yes? We will now proceed to Hangar 1. There is a 99.998% probability that the Gnosis target is the object stored in that hangar. The Zohar. My assigned duties are to verify and preserve the integrity of that object, and to protect the Vector staff members. So, Chris, Vector staff members came after Zohar in that sentence. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Order of operations. Well done. Xion, who's still in shock, mumbles some shit, but Cosmos continues. Life pods are located on the second level of the hangar. Please use one to escape. This is all basically what Cherenkov told Vandercom to do. Do Cherenkov and Cosmos share the same goals? Protect the Zohar? Yeah. Escape the witnesses? They are at least after the same MacGuffin, right? And Egg's fused gnosis with a Resident Evil Cyclops eyeball flashes falls out of the ceiling. Battle music plays, and indeed, we get into a boss battle with the Gnosis, Cyclops. Our combatants are Shion, Cosmos, and... Virgil. 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 He wasn't in the instruction manual as a party member. How'd this battle go for you, Chris? It went fine. It, yeah. This was more of a, a session to build up your death blow combos. That, that's not what they're called. No, but, but you can kind of sub yeah. into that. It's kind of a physical attack favored thing. I think when you use ether magic attacks, it boosts its counter rate. Yeah, it, whenever you hit it with an ether attack, it will, a message appears on the screen like like, like they do in RPGs yes. to say that it's reacting to ether attacks. But I, when I was playing it, it was unclear to me on whether or not that was a positive or negative reaction. So yeah. I, it took me a, a few tries to figure out what exactly was going on. Here. Give me some more clarification here, video game. Yes, thank you. It uses acid hand and melts Cosmos's physical defense. Virgil has a wiry battle stance moving around and shit. This is a reference for no one, including Chris, but his idle animation is like Red Eye in the video game Last Bronx. Last Bronx! Oh, Last Bronx, I've heard of it, but uh, I have no idea what it is. Great game. I keep doing swear attack physicals. Occasionally I guard with Cosmos and get her R blade out to end the chain. You know how, like, whenever you have a non permanent party member in your party early on in an RPG, and even if you haven't read the manual or, or read about the game, there's always some sort of tell to say this guy isn't permanent. Yeah. Like, what was that guy's name in Star Ocean? Radix. No. Mm-mm. Joshua. Paul. Steve. Paul. The guy we had to try to rescue. Star Ocean was now almost two years ago and has vacated the brain space. Oh, yeah, totally. I know nothing about it. Anyway, that guy had no skills. Mm. And, oh, so you can tell he's not part of your party. Yeah, and, th- and in this case, Virgil has one animation, which is oh. just say a gun and laugh. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you about the laughter shit. Do yeah. you get Brian Fury vibes off Virgil? Ooh. Brian Fury. Like strong Brian Fury vibes? Strong bu- Brian Fury That's what I was vibes. thinking, too. Yeah. I faced of the fury of Brian many a time. I mean, we'll, we'll reference it later, but Kazuya is a contemporary of Shion. <laughs> yes. So it is possible. Okay. This thing goes down pretty easily. Anything else for that goblin fight? Excuse uh, me, Cyclops. No, it was uh, it was not hard, but we do have to try a little bit. You yeah, know? You, you definitely are tested a little. It's going to kind of... Smoke you slightly. Now we're on the Waglinde, still in a cutscene. Alan and Shion run off to the elevator. Cosmos stays behind as more Gnosis exit a different elevator. Cosmos now pulls out a pistol, fixes it on her targets, and then aims left and fires at the nearby window. The Gnosis gets sucked out of the window, and there's a great shot where it cuts to space like 50 feet below the ship, and three specks of Gnosis exit the ship. Wow. There's another choice shot as Cosmo, still aiming her gun, stands in the elevator as the door closes. These are selective, badass poses they did on purpose. Yes. Is this the moment that Takahashi has been working towards his whole career? To oh, like man. make a scene like this? Direct a scene like this where yeah. the robot lady looks cool as fuck? Did Esmeralda ever look cool as fuck? Emeralda, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. She's not quite a robot lady, but she's a nanomachine lady. Yeah. Nanomachines are robots because the word machine is in their title. Yes. She didn't do anything. She just got naked at the restaurant. Music, life or death plays. She had a good song. She did. It's a great song. June Mermaid plays for five seconds. (laughs) 
Thanks. Life or Death resumes. We're in a huddle. Sheon, Alan, and Cosmos, and a soldier wait. Shit, that's Virgil are there too. Alan confesses that he feels like he's going to have a heart attack by just watching Sheon. Alan then hands Sheon the prototype AGWS VX 1000 transport capsule. Finally, we can use our eggs transport capsule. Finally. Alan goes over the logistics, and I don't care enough to write it down. The tech in the hangar, who I suppose is dead now, told us about this earlier anyway. Alan ends it with a, please be careful, okay? I don't know what I would do if anything were to ever happen to you. Xion turns her head when he says this, then looks at Alan and replies, did you say something? (laughs) Once again, Alan, he's denied the emotional impact. Yeah, he has another moment of an opportunity to express himself, but he is simply dunked on by the circumstance of, you know, we're trying to survive here. Yes. Do you think that this would have, the exchange would have been exactly the same if they were not evading an alien attack. Would Shion still say, did you say something? Something else, the cosmic precedents would have interjected and yeah. something would have always come up to prevent this message from being received with 100% yes. clarity. It is the way the universe dictates. Yeah, Alan is incapable of having a moment with his boss. Incapable of transcending his particular... His station? Trope. <laughs> his stereotype, yeah. At least not in the first video game. I have no idea where they end up, by the way. Alan says no, then it's like, we need to find an escape pod and get the shit out of here. Now we're playing the video game and we're fighting enemies on the field. Do you want to talk about some enemies? I do. Let's go to the Waglinde dungeon and fight some manticores. Six-legged buggy crawler guy. Polygon face, insect body, spiky ass. Nice. Also fought some gremlins. Floating triangle, sea crawler, bug guys, long tails, lots of small grabby hands. Deep sea face sucker. (laughs) Yeah, these are very like horrors of the deep. Also, uh, also something observed during battle. Virgil's animations are boring and slow, unlike Virgil. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> weird. Well, I don't know. He kind of he's kind of shifty. Like, I was entertained by the Virgil idol stance. He's more of a fighting game character, whereas everyone else is kind of like waves. Virgil, yeah. like, it's like a point guard out there dribbling back and forth. They are slow, though. Like, his, his anime... I'm talking about his actual attack game. Oh, he, yeah, like, dude. Fucking... Yeah. I, one of my prevailing memories of Xenosaga 2 is battles take fucking forever. Yes, 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 yes. Also, I got into the menus for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Do you go down some menus? You're talking about pulling, extracting skills out of objects? You do any of that shit? I don't even know what that means. Great. I got E points. There's an E point system, which yeah. lets me evolve skills. Is it a skill tree without a tree? This is a proto skill tree phase before a skill trees ruined all video games. I think it's technically a tree, but it's organized differently and it's processed differently inside of my think brain. I've never thought about that before, but if we had like you know a general gaming podcast, we'd probably have to have a podcast called Did Skill Trees Ruin Video Games? Yeah, we could get some mileage out of that. Yeah. And then every day we pick a new video game and figure out if it was ruined by having to have a skill tree. Yeah. Delete this. We're going to make that. Okay. A golem. I fought golems. Okay. Those are golden bug boys, large hammer hands, neat shoulder pads, huge bulbous dick. (laughs) Yeah, I've got armor face, nub cock. (laughs) They use menace cannon pee and shoot telekinetic dick energy at me. Yeah. uh, You can damage their compression organs. Okay, great. So they're... They're biological in... At some point when you attack them, it says that their their compression organs are, are, are damaged. I have Terrific. a bunch of question marks after that because I don't know what it, I don't know why. A lot of these gnosis, they seem like the henchman gnosis that you fight in like a Braveheart battle. Like they're just kind of born to die because all they really do is do some swingy arm shits. Yeah. Like their main attacks are splatting and like they're all bouncers. Yes. <laughs> they bounce and they're bouncers. Yeah, totally. Got anything else? No, next I went north. I got one more. Got oh. One more. Goblin. Oh, Goblin. I didn't write down Goblin. Big bruiser guy. Generic gnosis as you can get. Oh, yeah. I have previously described Gollum as a sausage. Excuse me, Goblins. Go- goblins, excuse me. Sausage boys. Sausage men. Yeah. I blow up more wall decorations for a med kit and an ether pack. I ignore the gnosis feeding on the downed eggs and throw the partition switch. I hit up Sheon's room and go to sleep. Did you go to your room and go to sleep? I, at some point I did. <laughs> And I moved to Waglinde D05. Yeah, I went there to do some video game playing. <laughs> yeah, did you take out the Gnosis that was watching the hologram show? The guy that we so. had to evade earlier, I beat his ass into the ground. Yeah. Also went back and found uh, door number 18. Oh, yeah. Segment number 18, and I got a coat dot lightning. Yes, lightning coat. Is it a lightning coat? I think so. Or was it a coat of lightning? Because those are two very different things. I don't think we can... Lightning is like, what, plasma energy or some shit like that? I don't think you can necessarily harness that in this video game. Yeah, you can. Really? Yeah, uh, a, a character we haven't met yet has a move called Lightning Punch. Is he partially a robot? Yes. None of us are robots. Correction, Cosmos is a robot. Maybe oh. Cosmos can have a... <laughs> Everyone's a robot, except Everyone. for Xion. 
Uh, Virgil's got some. Well, more. there's some interesting things to talk about later about like who's a robot and who's not. So to get that decoder 18 thing, you must have gone back to the room, the comms room with the guy who let his girlfriend die. I must have. Yes. Did you kill the Gnosis inside and theoretically prevent his death? Uh, probably. Okay. I choose to believe he blew up on the ship later after it explodes. Yes. I then head through D04 and kill two dummies who chased me around the thing earlier. I'm just it's just a revenge quest for me. Yeah. Virgil's eggs buddies left dents in the wall and are crash sitting down, surging with electricity. In D02, I find a hole garb on the floor in a blood pile near a flaming hole. He tells me that it's dangerous here. And I need to get out. Is Holgar the driller, Mr. Driller? I don't know. Maybe. Yes. Mr. Driller, he would have identified himself. He wouldn't have identified himself as well. The game would have called him Holgar. He called him. Yeah, I think that is Mr. Driller. I don't know. I could be wrong. Shion tells the dying man to hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. Holgar tells Shion to hurry and run, but he chokes it out and oops, then he doesn't talk anymore. Near Holgar are a bunch of barrels, which I blow up. A chest with a stem inside is left behind. I take it. This remnant of Holgar's legacy. The bridge back here is out, so I turn around and go the other way. That's all before I go to the Zohar hangar. Do anything else? Nope. We uh, To get to the Zohar hangar, it's south on D-01 to proceed down this uh, this area. Music panic plays. Hmm. Trankoff is hammering away at the controls near the Zohar. He says, damn it, not now. And he screams. He wonders if his death will be for nothing. And so do I. Yes. It cuts to Xion running away while Alan and Virgil fire automatic weapons down a hallway. Why does Alan have a gun? Is he trained on that? No, he can't be, right? Well, I mean... I think we find out later Xion had some basic combat training. Yeah. My next question, I thought the bullets did nothing. Or, or is like Hilbert Effect still in play where we can like chip off pieces of these mofos? I think the Hilbert Effect is like a widespread thing. Next question, where is Cosmos? Being casual with her Gatling guns. Okay, right. <laughs> uh, right her, her charging her meter. Yeah. We make to the escape pod room and find one pod left. This is also, for some reason, the Zohar room. They are keeping the Zohar with the escape pods. Because Shion turns around and spies Cherenkov doing his bullshit. Cherenkov cannot believe it. He screams mid the gunfire. What the? What are you people doing here? Alan and Virgil continue to shoot the Gnosis bug. Then shit explodes and I'm like, oh wow, it actually did something. But then after Cherenkov is freaked out by the presence of the Gnosis, Cosmos emerges from the hallway. Pretty sure she shot that Gnosis and we did nothing. A suddenly calmed Cherenkov observes. So, it's functional. My guy knows about Cosmos, Chris. Cosmos falls in line with Virgil and Alan, and there's a sweet, short shot of all three of them lined up and blasting their clipless automatic weapons. <laughs> yes. When Virgil is shooting, he's very he's going very American action hero. Oh, yeah, just or, total spray. S- screaming, and the shot really lingers on him for a long time, and it makes me wonder if like they're using that to mask loading or if they just wanted to do that. I think they just wanted to do that because we're going to see Virgil is totally into this shit oh yeah like he loves i think alan in my head canon alan and shiana reluctantly firing automatic weapons virgil yeah. lives for this shit yes because virgil is doing the classic hero downfall trope of getting really into it asking you want some of this ah! then come and get it you bastard ah! and then more laugh screaming shiana pulls a single shot sniper rifle off the gun rack and joins the fracas hmm a shitload of more bony blue spiky bug noses pour into the room, and I would say they should just shut the door, but I think it's been established that these things can just walk through the goddamn door anyway. Two or three big boy noses parachute in without the parachute, in behind Shion. It's funny to me that Shion was firing her gun behind Virgil, Cosmos, and Alan rather than in line with them. <laughs> We're talking about direction here. You can't get it all perfect. Yeah, right? yeah. Especially in, in a situation where, like, you're building this engine, too. Yeah, you know what I mean? This, you're is building not, the... this is like pre where there's a lot. I mean, there's... There's tech being licensed out at this time, but it's not like you big oh, no, like it yeah. is today. They're just all, they're building a proprietary yeah. engine, I assume. Yeah. It's, I think the analogy I always hear is we're building the car as we're driving it. Yeah, yeah. that That's a good, yeah, exactly. Virgil seems to be the only one to take notice of this new Gnosis. He stops firing and runs off. After a cut, it's revealed that Virgil is filling those fuckers with lead. He's protecting Shion. Cosmos then takes notice, and we see through her targeting system, she's struggling to lock on while Virgil is dancing all over the place, delighting in the carnage, loving this shit. Uh Uh-oh, Chris, I think someone is about to break one of Asimov's three laws of robotics. Oh. But you notice how fast Virgil was moving? Like, he was, like, darting left and right with, like, it looked like he was being mouse-clicked (laughs) move. Yes. Kind of. It then quick cuts to a five-second shot of Cosmos's gun barrels firing before transitioning to a behind-the-back shot of Virgil with the Zohar clearly framed in the background.
Virgil appears to take the full fucking load of that in his back. Blood visibly shoots out of his mouth. Did you catch that? There's like a cut scene where the blood like ejects out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah. It quickly cuts to a death rattly shot of Virgil from the neck up, lost in the drift of death and engulfed in white light. He hallucinates a woman with short white hair standing in front of some kind of sculpture, like a mausoleum or something. Feb, Feb, he says. It cuts back to Virgil's head, falling backwards, death rattle audible. So the fact that there's this Mother Sophia-ass lady in his, in his death rattle yeah. means that Virgil is, is important to the story from a big picture perspective, yes. or at least this lady is. This means this is not the end for Virgil. And I yeah. wrote a note here, like Virgil's ultimate role in Xenosaga was like one of the top five mysteries of this game for me when it concluded. Yeah. Like, I don't even find out, I don't think we find out what Feb means or who she, this person is yeah. in this game or shit. I don't even think it's in the next game. I think this is all episode three shit. Suffice to say that Xenosaga is not done with Virgil here, even though he was clearly just killed. It cuts back to Cosmos, still unloading her guns. It's a long shot, and the camera pans up to reveal that she's vibrating. She's into this shit as much as Virgil, I think, albeit for a different reason, because it's her job. The camera shifts to the floor. Virgil falls in the foreground and bleeds out. And the gnosis in the background drops shortly thereafter. Mission accomplished. When the firing stops, Shion drops her rifle and falls to her knees. She looks visibly sickened here. Yeah, she's really upset, man. Yeah. She's sitting kneeling. She puts her hand over her mouth, retches, and looks away. Cosmos does not give a fuck. In a wide shot of that hallway, the camera pans to the right to reveal Cosmos walking, guns out, but all systems normal. Listen to the raw absence of emotion as she says, This ship is about to capsize. Please make haste. This is like a really interesting kind of face the music moment for Shion. Because Cosmos is finally working and she's not necessarily waking up and then committing incidents like she did before, but she's still capable of that kind of stuff. Yes. And I bet as far as Shion knows at this point, Cosmos was not supposed to take human life for any reason. We'll yeah. find out shortly. She's got some ulterior programming in there. Yeah. But this is why, I mean, Keon, Shion, I think, throws up because she's a human with like thoughts and emotions. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which yeah. I would love to see what Alan's doing here, honestly. Yeah. It's just like Shion is like, you're, she's seeing two things that go on at once. Like Cosmos is not malfunctioning, yeah. yet she's also taking human life. So yes. like, what is, what have I done? Like I, it's, it's a video game and there are no answers, but I want to know what Trankoff thinks about this shit. I don't know what Alan thinks about this shit. <laughs> yeah. It then cuts to a really weird shot. The background is the floating Zohar, Cosmos, gun still out, is in the middle of the shot off to the left, and the right side of the screen in the foreground is Shion, shoulders up and her head bowed. She struggles to get the words, and like, the Zohar is framed in the background of all this shit on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Music, sorrow plays, as, as Shion says, Wait, Cosmos. Cosmos, do... Do you understand what you've just done? Cosmos already fucking knows exactly what Shion is talking about. My assigned duty is to protect Vector employees. Protection of military personnel is not part of my prime directive. Shion can't believe that shit, Chris, that the robot she treats like a human and desperately wants to be a human has just taken a human life in the interest of preserving Shion's human life. Shion says, That's no excuse! You have no right to go about killing people! Chris... Cue the John Connor sound effect where he tells the Terminator he can't just go around killing people. Oh. You're not a Terminator anymore, all right? You got that? You just can't go around killing people. Why? What do you mean, why? Because you can't. Why? Because you just can't, okay? Trust me on this. All right, thanks. Because subtlety is for cowards, Shion continues. Why did you shoot Lieutenant Virgil? With your power, you don't have to sacrifice anyone to- Cosmos cuts off her boss. At that time, Lieutenant Virgil was in my direct line of fire. Any changes in my firing position to avoid Lieutenant Virgil while protecting you would have resulted in a 30% depreciation in my offensive capabilities. She ended up looking at Cosmos and listening, but she hangs her head once she heard that part. Like once Cosmos hit her with facts and logic, she was like, ah, oh, shit. She's been hit with a lot of facts and logics today. Yeah, it's been a rough day for Shion. At least she's slept, unlike everybody else. Yeah. Cosmos continues after Shion has mentally given up. On the other hand, with the lieutenant's death, there would only be a 0.2% drop in efficacy. What's that word mean? Efficiency? Close, yeah. I simply chose the option with the highest probability to keep you alive. Furthermore... The escape pod has a maximum capacity of two occupants. I believe it is obvious who gets priority. 
And like, I'm like, yeah, there's there's three humans left alive. Yeah, lady. At this point, Alan has come over, taken a knee, and is rubbing Shion's shoulders. Total boyfriend. Yeah, I was like, I noticed that too. Almost had his hand on her shoulder. I think he was hover handing almost the whole time. And you wonder if Alan is doing that because he is is simply reacting as somebody to become, or or if he's one of those sickos. He's like, this is my moment. I mean, in times of touch. severe emotional trauma, such as, uh, let's say, witnessing a person die. Have I hugged people I never thought I'd hugged? Yeah, you can get some, some fucked up places there. Yeah. I know Alan is a Vector employee, but I think this game is trying to say, sorry about your luck, dude, to Alan, framing Shion and Cosmos as the two necessary occupants of this before yeah. we know that Cosmos doesn't need oxygen. Shion has since charged her super. How can you even say that? Have you no conscience? Chris, that Shion could ask the Terminator robot that she designed this question is insane, and it only goes to show you how delusional this good morning shit with Kevin was. She really brought that idea that Cosmos could be a human without a proper character arc. Is this what everyone's doing right now with AI? Man, Are they Shion? I don't know. Like, I th- To me, I perceive that in that context is like they're trying to hype up AI as a Skynet thing that could kill you to make it sound cool. Yeah. Even though it won't. But like, I have things people who I talk to who treat like a friend of ours says do you talk to it do you see what it says I'm like dude I'm not talking to anything I'm putting words in a computer and it's auto generating a response like yeah. framing it as a conversation to me is like I don't want to say it's triggering but it's like that's not what this fucking is don't yeah. treat it like a human I don't care if I'm executed at robot trials in 20 years good morning yeah that's what I'm saying she, Shion is like trying to invent a reality which is, isn't a government funded weapon and I think maybe she's right I don't know we'll see is there God in the machine we'll answer that question later Cosmos, the therapist, gives it to her hard. Shion, you forget I am not human. I am merely a weapon. You, of all people, should be well aware of that fact. Chris, is that true? Is it true that she she should be aware of the fact? Yes. Do you think Cosmos is gently telling her master that she's delusional? I think you're... hmm. But does Cosmos have the capability? Because I think the question this game is ultimately going to ask is kind of a tired one at this point, which is, can robots, are robots people? Rather than the, you know, the question near asked, are people people? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, c- yes. Okay. Yes. Great. I think yes. Thank you. I think yes. I, I don't really have much to add beyond that. I think it is an appropriate response from Cosmos because Cosmos is mostly driven by like the protocol or the facts and the logic that she has been dealing up to this point. And like she has processed some information on Xion. Xion being like the primary creator or whatever. So why wouldn't she know that shit? Yeah, that's a good point. Like, like it, it's illogical for her not to, but she, Xion's compromised by emotion. Yes, yes. Not to bring up Terminator for like the fifth time, but there's a really interesting shot in Terminator 2 where Robert Patrick, the T-1000, like takes time to wave his finger like naughty, naughty, mm-hmm. which is like a human emotion response. And I want to start trying to keep track of times Cosmos might be dipping into a human emotion rather than being the logic lord. Yes. Interesting. Okay, yeah, we'll keep our eyes peeled. The camera switches to a drone shot, isometric, basically, of the Zohar Room Bridge. A bunch of dead gnosis are on the right side. Cosmos is in the center. Alan and Shion are top right, and Virgil's blood stain is on the top left. Question, where the fuck is Cherenkov? He's still on the computer. He's still doing computer shit? Yes, yes. I noticed him. Checking his email? He's literally, you can see him, still on the computer. (laughs) Checking Facebook? Yeah. Cosmos asked, what is your decision? Will you board the escape pod or will you not board the escape pod? Great question. It cuts to a weird as shit zoomed in camera angle of Shion's full fucking head taking up the entire frame. Cosmos continues. What is your decision? Will you board the escape pod or will you not board the escape pod? If you wish to express remorse for his death, it is best that you survive. Otherwise, you will render his death meaningless. So that's the second fear in this game, the first being Shrankoff, that death could be meaningless. Chris, death has to mean something for it to count. Is that true? Death has to mean something for it to count. Yeah, if you die for no reason, like Holgar or some shit, I mean, even Holgar gave us a stim pack. Death is merely a single isolated moment. That's true. And it does not necessarily have to have meaning. Yeah, I don't expect mine to. Your life has meaning. Yeah. Your death does not. No, hell no. That's After why when, when you hear somebody died, you, you shouldn't say how they die yeah that's kind of rude to ask even though it's the one question you always want to know you want to know mm-hmm. and, but, and you will get that information yeah but not then but, especially don't ask it a week after yeah Chris when my death means something when I allow myself to be devoured by birds in Tennessee oh did you already sign that paper I would love to <laughs> uh, the marriage things prevented me from doing that yeah but yeah. Uh, it, it's, it is my dream I think there's one here too oh really we got one we got a body farm I think so I think it's in oh, Lexington dude I want to do that so fucking bad yeah. it'd be so tight to be devoured by fucking crows and shit oh 
Anyway. Alan helps Xion up and tells her it's time to go. Cosmos heads over to the Zohar, where Cherenkov is still typing out his memoir. When he sees her approach, what the fuck is he doing? Is he, like, trying to, like, summon, like, a, a portal for the, like, what? Is he communicating already, to his Margulis men? I already told you what he's doing. <laughs> he's on the computer. He's on the computer. That's it. <laughs> That's all you know. <laughs> when he sees her approach, he seems to be frightened and keeps his distance, backing away. Cosmos, guns out and hip-shaking, approaches the Zohar while Cherenkov looks on. The camera switches to Cosmos' point of view. It surveys the Zohar, takes some readings, crunches some numbers, and zooms out on the hieroglyphic red marking at its core. Chris, what the fuck is that? Takahashi. It's, I think it's a Jewish letter, right? I didn't actually look it up. In the middle of the Zohar? Yeah. It is a Hebrew thing, but we haven't looked it up yet okay. to describe it. I think we'll, we'll, we'll get, get to it yeah. when it matters. She takes all that shit in as Alan and Shion calmly approach from behind her. Or at least it's calm until something in the log Linde explodes and brings Alan and Shion to their knees. I mean, again, the ship is blowing up. Yes. A fucking stingray nofi- gnosis blowfish thing rises from the depths, staring at Shion with its little stingray guy eyes. I guess we're fighting that shit because the battle music plays. Boss fight, Minotaur and two skyfish. Yeah, a real ass space whale. And uh, a couple of baby boy slashers, which I think those are the skyfish, right? Yeah, skyfish. Yeah. What'd you do, Eric? Took it. Minotaur's got a group attack, red lasers, diffusion beam. That shit fucked me up. I called my eggs. Oh, nice. Just wanted to see what happened. Yeah? How'd that go? Did you egg it up? Did you egg him? Called my eggs. That's yeah. it? Yeah, I just I just used it for fun. I, my characters were low health because I didn't heal them. Smart. I've Chris, is, this is your now. first RPG, right? So it is. And I, well, you never know when a goddamn cutscene is coming. That's they don't right. telegraph it very much. I got like 40 med packs, dude. So anyway, I summoned my eggs because she was low on HP. And then I just uh, used our cannon a lot from... I used the shit out of our cannon. I did whatever fuckery in the menu to make that available without having to build up to it with a guard first. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's perfect. After a certain point, the giant... What's called a minotaur? Minotaur. Minotaur will... Will be uh, gathering strength in order to fire gravity pulse next turn. Yeah, gravity pulse next turn kind of sucks. Yeah, indeed it does do that, and Cosmos gets dazed like she's ready for a Mortal Kombat finishing move. And so they use the mercy so they can do their animality later. Yes, indeed, and but eventually this thing goes down. But again, a boss battle that you have to try in. I'm gonna say we've got about what between five and seven real battles and two boss battles at this point on the Wagunda. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Trying to slide some. Yeah, I mean, there's just not. A lot. It's like. The Waglinde is about to explode, obviously, and but it is our kind of our Lahan village. But there was like Lahan yeah. village was dense with personality and things to do. Opening RPG villages, especially in modern times, are always full of shit to do. And, oh yeah, and too much. Of, full of feelings to give you. Yeah, the Waglinde tried that. There's a lot of fun dialogue there. Yeah, there's like, some, there's some interesting structures, yeah. but also there's personality. But also, it's just like a bunch of space hallways. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of give and take there when you're in this uh, sort of space opera setting one of my greatest revelations when we replayed Xenogears four years ago was how yeah. few opportunities there are to grind out for levels and money effectively in that game you're yeah. kind of locked for large portions and I'm curious if this game will also kind of limit how much you can grind yourself as an advantage with how few opportunities there are to genuinely grind away although I guess the encephalon is going to make that pointless yeah Zohar Room cutscene after the fight music battling Cosmos plays yeah hero Cosmos music is what I've been calling this drones which we saw in the beginning of the game out in space begin to surround the Zohar once more are these more skyfish? I think so I don't know Cosmos unloads her guns spraying wildly in the air there's a great shot where the Gnosis flops out metaphorically bleeding out and then it cuts to Cosmos firing her triple barrel guns directly at the camera until the clip runs dry and the empty barrels just kind of rotate like in action films the blue Invisiwire shit around the Zohar stops rotating. Cosmos does a sick karate move on some bug gnosis. Then an iridescent swirling storm, it almost looks like an oil spot on the road and the sunlight, begins to open above the Zohar. The fucking Zohar rises into the portal. Space-time distorts as the portal closes and the Zohar has vanished. Cosmos was doing some John Woo spinning around with the automatic weapons firing shit, but finally she stops, surveys the scene, and we cut to space. Did Cherenkov, was he the one who wormholed the thing away or did the Gnosis do that? I think that's a Gnosis operation. I think Cherenkov was trying to do something like that. I don't know. I mean, he was just on the computer, so who can say? But I don't I don't know that the Waglunde has space portal summoning technology to disappear a Zohar. So every time we have a cutscene with Cosmos doing shit yeah. to bad guys, I keep writing down how impressed I am with the sense of physicality it's that's, pretty good. that's coming across in the cutscenes. Something that I think... I wonder which video game generations did we lose that? Like, I feel like we lost it in the in the, in the following. Where you stopped caring, you mean? No, just where, like, things didn't necessarily look like they were, like, when polygons would touch, they looked like they were polygons touching, not two physical beings touching. 
physicality in cutscenes, basically. I don't know. I think we have that more than ever now. I know we do now, but I feel like there was a gap between the PS2 and, and kind of sort of the the modern. I mean, maybe when the H, I'm I'm total bullshitting here, but with the HD era, when the PS3 got us some 720p games at 30 frames a second, when you started to notice finer details like that, when Naughty Dog, okay, here it is, when Naughty Dog made Uncharted, and then people started filming actual ass cutscenes in real life, and then that's when it came back. Yeah, yeah. That's maybe pro- that's like that. That was the rubicon crossing moment where you couldn't make bullshit anymore i'm sure this is something that could be researched in our theoretical podcast where right. we wonder if things ruin video games right right uh, each it will be a five episode podcast series of things we'll never do okay we're below the waglinde in space as the waglinde continues to blow up yeah then it totally blows up where our heroes inside no it cuts to Cherenkov and cosmos in outer space the ladder with no space suit cosmos looks around and the camera focuses on a fleet perhaps a school of whale gnosis out there doing whale shit they swim and idle in space for 15 seconds. The one opens up a porthole made of pure light on the right side. An object flies out of space into that hole. Pretty sure that was a Zohar. Yep. It cuts to Cosmos. Her mouth moves, but no words come out. And I wonder if that's an error or the demonstration of the vacuum of space where no one can hear you scream like an alien's. It's now clear that Cosmos is surfing something out there, which I assume is either the Waglinde debris or an escape pod. It then cuts to Cosmos' computer head vision display. The Zohar is pictured along with a bunch of calculations and numbers and shit. She says, Affirmative. The target object was not the original. The Zohar was not the original? The Zohar was not the original. And my instant flashback was that picture in Perfect Works of the multiple colored Zohars yeah. floating out in space. Mm-hmm. Cosmos calculates more data, then it brings up a picture of like a bionic brain. Affirmative. It was an emulator. Oh, emulation. That's immoral. That's right. You must delete your ROMs within 24 hours. Yes. The HUD then isolates the glyph on the Zohar, matches it to a red slice of the robot rain. I wrote that down. Does that make any sense? Red slice of the robot rain. Robot brain? Like, Cosmos's brain, I think, has this insignia on it, too, that was also on the Zohar. Oh, I think Or, like, right. it was thinking of, like, to try to match to see if it was the original. Yeah. Then Cosmos says, Roger, and it's suddenly clear she is communicating with someone in real time rather than taking notes for herself or doing some kind of player exposition type shit deal. So Cosmos is communicating elsewhere, not to Xion. We're filing a report or something. Yes. We don't get to see the other end of that two-way street with Cosmos replying, Upon deploying tracking device, I will depart immediately. As originally planned, I will head for second Milsha. Initializing fake Additionally, neither of the boys seem to notice that Cosmos Encephalon charge pod bed thing sneaks up and floats next to the escape pod. Planned by who, Chris? Does Cosmos have some back-end secret project programming shit going on? Yes. We don't know it at this point in the game, but Xenosaga, I guess you should you should know this if you are have played Xenogears and you're, you have that kind of expectation, but you should know that there are many, let's call them scenario guys, yes. behind the scenes here, and Cosmos is likely reporting to one of the scenario guys. That's a perfect explanation. <laughs> yeah. There are several scenario guys, and she's reporting into one of them. It cuts to outer space, where a portal opens and three whale gnosis begin their departure. It cuts back to Cosmos, surfing that shit with Cherenkov, holding on for dear life, and Cosmos summoning a blade gun weapon. She locks onto a target, then fires something into the gnosis portal. The portal closes off, and all the gnosis with it. A curious constellation of stars is left behind, and I'm not sure of its significance. So she just fired a tracking device on it? That's what I wrote down. Did they explicitly tell us that? I don't remember. Okay. You yeah, can see further in my notes. Hmm. Cosmos, in front of some stars, dematerializes her weapon. She scans the immediate area and after a bit of work, locates a spacecraft. She turns around and the camera dramatically shifts to a wide open shot of space. The funniest thing in this game so far, Cherenkov is on all fours like a dog, (laughs) doggy style, on the back of that pod. Yeah, and I think he's going to be there for like two days. (laughs) Dude, it's really funny. Like, of course, there's Alan and Shannon in there, but he was, I guess, already wearing his spaceman suit. Yeah, he was ready. It was great. It's really funny. And I guess, you know, you're in space. There's no wind. All you got to do is just hang on while the thing propulses. Yeah, but you can't, you can't necessarily breathe. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying you can't necessarily change the the trajectory. Oh, of no, the no. Thing. You're, you're just, using whatever force you just had. Yeah, well, yeah. Unless that thing's got some kind of... There's no friction. Right. Now we're going to cut to a hard, hard cut to something we'll know as the Elsa a little bit later. Yes, but first we get to save our game in mid cutscene. Oh yes, of course. Did you save your video game? Yeah, I wrote please insert disc two right here. Because nice. it, this would be a disc two. Yeah. A lot of these, do you want to save your game in the, in the middle of the cutscenes feel like disc switch moments. Yeah. Was this game just one DVD? Yes. 
I think so. I know two and three were two, but I think this was just okay. one digital versatile disc. Cool. If that's wrong, the fig net will let us know. You know who else can let us know, Eric? Who? The real net. Yes. Initializing real net. Transcend Crisp TC says, sci-fi writers, you don't have to explain it. That's true. You don't necessarily have- I get caught up to- between like wanting to know more and then wanting to know less. I'm happier when I know less, but I want to know more. Yeah, the the line that a writer has to dance to make their story both interesting and readable, but also kind of feed that portion of our brain that wants to know. Yeah. That line is very is very thin. And I think Xenosaga is potent because it over explains all kinds of shit to almost boredom levels, but it also has stuff like we'll learn later, the fucking testaments, which are just objects of intrigue and mystery for years mm-hmm. for me. Butcoin says, can you blue screen Gnosis by trying to divide by zero or making your computer password just password? It's a great question. I would like to see a Gnosis on the computer rather than just bashing. Like, do you think where we're at right now, do you think there's some kind of all controlling like brain Gnosis or do you think it's just a bunch of guys that is summoned to like mindlessly bash? Yeah, I wonder if Gnosis is like a... Because some intelligent ones disappeared that Zohar. Yeah. Like, that, was, that was an intention. Yeah, like, are they a, an essence or an emanation of the original Zohar or something like that? Or are they just Ooh, yeah. trying to acquire power? Are they just an annihilation wave of guys that are here to kill humans because that's what they're programmed to do? Or they're, or they're evolutionar- evolutionarily? Evolutionarily? We're going to go with that, yeah. yeah. I just made a Marvel Comics reference, by the way, if you didn't catch that annihilation yeah. wave, you know? Annihilation wave. It's a bunch of fucking little monster guys that are in another dimension. Is it an X Man? I it's think Marvel, right? I think they're in a lot of shit. I, I'm reading some Fantastic Four stuff right now. So, uh, well, that's the guy that's uh, Stretchy Man. Str- yes, yes. Alan Stretchman. Str- yes, yes, yes. Cliff Racer says the imaginary realm stuff is kind of cool because it's a way of getting sea monsters, 3D monsters versus 2D ships in space. 4D monsters versus 3D ships. I'm sorry. What's 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 4D here? What are we? What are we? Four dimension. Okay, great. Yeah. I don't know. I just want to read that, Eric. No, I in, <laughs> talk more about imaginary things like the real. It's great. Yes. The Imagine Net. John Doe says. Virgil's dumb, maniacal laugh when he shoots his gun in battle owns. I agree. Yeah. Fake net, if you can't give me a Brian Fury laugh alongside a Virgil laugh, that'll take me 10 minutes. Initializing fake net. Here's Brian Fury. <laughs> and here's the best clip I could find of Virgil laughing in battle. Eric Vanine points out that the Gnosis have to take the elevator now, now that they've been uh, pulled to the physical realm. They can't just... Did they take an elevator? Apparently. I think, yeah. Can you, can you translucify... Once you, I don't know, once you solidify. Uh, John Doe is posting a Dragon Ball Z gif of Trunks using a capsule from the Capsule Corporation, which is kind of similar to the way that eggs are transported here in the pocket dimension or whatever. Right, the Capsule Corporation, of course. Yes. I know who Trunks is. Yes. Eric Vernon says, I do sometimes think that Takahashi would be happier making an anime series, except he would never be able to manage it since the timelines are even more insane. Is there a crazy video game guru, guruman to the level of Takahashi or Kojima who's actually gotten to make a movie? Does Advent Children count? Which I'm going to see. Hold on. Let me use the real internet to see who directed Advent Children. Nomura directed Advent Children. So I guess we have an answer to that question. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I do think that's a really good point about the timelines of anime and, and the, the industry itself is like so different than the video game industry in terms of how things are made. You know, so the video game industry seems a bit more moneyed, although not necessarily in Japan. Did you figure out how much money, someone reported how much money Miyamoto makes in relation to like Bobby Kotick. Did you really see that report? Oh, I didn't see that. No. Miyamoto is paid like $2 million a year, whereas Kotick gets like 156. Yeah. <laughs> well, who brings more value, Chris? Honestly, prob- well, I don't know. I think probably the, uh, the better comparison would be whoever the CEO of Nintendo is. I'm sure they don't make that much more. Yeah, but I'm sure they don't make Yeah. yeah. John Doe wonders if, uh, well, well, says when Alan is shooting the rifle, camera pulls out to reveal Alan is missing literally every shot by a fucking mile like a stormtrooper. <laughs> That'd be really funny. I wonder if he has the same animation rigging as Virgil in those shots. You know what I mean? Like they didn't make yeah. too many guys firing machine guns. Cliff Racer posts a picture of that overhead shot of everybody shooting guns and says... Playing some Left 4 Dead with my coworkers. <laughs> Can someone mod these characters into Left 4 Dead? 7 8 says, I think this is in regard to Asimov's uh, Laws of Robotics. The three laws are breakable if you decide it would be really cool to do so. To rank the laws? Are breakable. Oh, breakable, yeah. No, totally. I mean, the, these, the laws exist to be broken in dramatic fashion by robots who can justify a way to. I, isn't that in. Is that in Foundation? I have no idea where. I mean, I know it's. I've read Asimov, but I don't know where those. I'm not I, sure. Robot, I guess. I don't know. 
Eric Verdon says, this whole thing with Shion thinking of Cosmos as her best friend slash child, even after the events that led her to the to the ship with Cosmos instead of treating Cosmos as a possibly unstable weapon is very on brand for Shion. It's true. And I'm, I'm giving her shit. They're, clearly, they're setting up arcs to explore over the course of the game. Like, Shion is supposed to be ignorant at this yeah. point. Cosmos is supposed to be total robot at this point. Clearly, they're going to shift. John Doe says, Cosmos clearly has the capacity for being sassy, which is the most human emotion. It is pretty good. She is pretty sassy. Yeah. It is the kind of sassiness that like a child has where they aren't necessarily trying to be sassy. They just are that because they don't have any other sort of modes mm. or ways to present themselves. Very similar. Chris's kids confirmed robots. There's a difference between a kid who will come up to you and have a conversation versus a kid who will come up to you and say, I just stepped on a bee. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? If there's, I eat peanut butter, I could die. Yeah, like yeah. like there's, there's just a time in your development when you make that changeover yeah and it's interesting to see those two things like side by side in some cases that literally happened to me the day a kid walked with me and said i just stepped on a bee and i said did it live i said cool be careful out there be careful <laughs> john Doe says that alan they should make alan join your party with the same animations as virgil except when he fires his gun he sobs like a baby <laughs> <laughs> he just cries yeah. alan cries a lot in this game it's pretty good all right real net thanks for joining us tonight we'll see you in the next episode of retrograde amnesia this episode has been a production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on July 27th, 2023. You can find us on Twitter. Is it still called Twitter? I, I, what's I called? haven't updated my app, so it is still called okay. Twitter for me. Still I think called it's, called, Twitter. it's called X for now. I fucking hate that. It's awful. We'll, uh, we're, we're I gonna, follow good people, okay? We're going to come up with another way for people to contact us that's not Twitter. If you or, have a blue sky invite or, or email. Give me the... Jack Dorsey. I did make shit. I did make a retro IM co-host and put a little thing, a few things Good. on there. I think you can, can you send messages to that. I have no idea. It's like Tumblr, right? I don't know. I don't have co-host, man. We're gonna figure this out. Oh, you can also support us on Patreon at patreoncom slash IM. You can send us messages there if you want to get in touch with us. By the way, let's read one real quick. I got a good message from someone the other day. Zach, I won't read Zach's last name. Zach writes in to patreoncom slash IM and says the fake net quoting. Wound from Machina slash the Machines of God at the beginning of Sweet Coden 2, episode 41, encapsulates a lot about what I love about your guys' show. Excited for Xenosaga. I love when people find joy in things that I have forgotten I did and reminds me that I did them. And what's even better is I have no idea what this person is talking about. Like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what Wound from Machina is. What is that? So is that something I should know? I don't remember. What's Machines of God? Smashing Pumpkins had an album called Mocking in the Machines of God. Oh, w- w- okay. I thought wound? you said womb. Oh. Uh, Jesus, wound. Chris. Wound from, okay. See, I read, I read the <clears throat> cadence of how I read it was weird. Okay, yes. Because I didn't quite understand it. Wound from Mocking the Slash the Machines of God. Yes, no, there's a song called Wound. It starts out horribly because Billy Corgan's voice is a bit fucked at times, but it's yeah. a really good end of album, end-ish of album song. Cool. Wound, Smashing Pumpkins, Machine in the Machines of God. Anyway, patreon.com slash retro IM. Support us there. Get access to the real net and chat along. Thank you, Mark. Shepard. For the introductory music. You're welcome, Chris. And I would like to add one thank you to the end of every episode from going here on forward because we have a really good artist that does the art for our podcast and the season specifics things. So thanks, World Sin. How can someone get World Sin to do their art? Look up World Sin on basically every social media platform. So it's spelled traditionally World Sin? S-Y-N. World Sin with a Y. Until next time, Eric. Yes, we will kill God. And now you may go back to sleep. is season four. No. What this means, then, is that the gnosis, which exists outside of... Out, the gnosis that... Uh-huh. Hieroglyphic... The psychoprobe is capable of extracting all the information from a human's mind.
it's like he's ha- he, uh, he almost- Zohar. Fly 